Have you got one of these? or one of these, or any of the Haltech Elite Series ECU? And have you been eyeing off Haltech's new NSP tuning software? Well, stick around, have I got some great news for you. Since the release of the Haltech Elite Series ECU, we've been using the ESP programming software, the Elite Software Programmer. So that's the software that comes on the USB stick or the software that you download off our website. It goes on the laptop. We then use the USB cable that goes between the laptop and the engine management system. You go online and you tune your ECU. All pretty straightforward. But we recently released the Nexus series ECUs with the NSP software, the Nexus Software Programmer. And everyone with an Elite, have to admit, have seen a few people getting a little bit jealous of the comm speed and the new software package. But today, I'm finally here to tell you, I have got some news for you. Now, whether you bought the very first Elite series ECU or whether you got one a few weeks ago, all the Elite series ECUs are firmware updatable. So firmware, is the part that's inside the engine management system. It's the bit that your laptop and the software communicates with, and that's the bit that does all the fancy stuff to keep your engine running. Every time we do a firmware update, we might add, back in the day, we've added variable cam control, added closed loop boost control, added torque management, drive shaft curve targeting, all of this crazy stuff. As time's gone on, we've added more features and more features and more features Every one of those firmware updates adds all those features for you guys for free, but there is a downside. As we're adding more and more and more features, the software package gets a little bit slower and a little bit slower every single time we add one of those features or one of those functions to the engine management system. But I'm here to tell you that we've got this unbelievable update. We are now using the Nexus software programmer to communicate with your Elite Series ECU. So what that means is that all we need to do is grab the new software, we do another firmware update, that firmware update kicks us over into the Nexus software package, the Elite series goes online, up and running, tuning a whole bunch of new features and functions, so let's get into it and I'll show you what the differences are. I know you've been waiting for this moment a long time. Now in order to update your Elite series ECU to use the Nexus software programmer, all we need to do is download the latest ESP software. Then we'll go online with the Elite Series ECU using the ESP software for the very last time. We'll click go online. It's gonna to connect to the ECU. This does take a little bit to go online here. So this takes uh, say a minute or so to go online. This is one of the big changes that happen when we go to the NSP software programmer. The thing is gonna go online so quickly, you're not even gonna notice whether it happened or not. All right, the ECU is online now. So the next step is to upgrade it to the NSP software. If I go up to the top here and go to tools, you'll notice a new menu here. Update ECU for use with NSP software. I'm gonna click on that. A little menu comes up here and it tells me I have a USB connection to the ECU. The ECU has 12 volts. The NSP installer is updated. So what's happened is when you downloaded the Elite ESP software, so that final release, that also has the Nexus software built into it. So if the Nexus software is not installed on your machine, this installer is gonna do it for you. So don't worry about downloading the NSP software separately, this does it all for you. So here, I'm about to click install NSP, but very important, whenever you're doing any firmware update, always make sure to unplug your ignition system we don't want anything funny to happen while we're doing a firmware update and we can't guarantee the state of those ignition outputs while the firmware update is in process. If I read further down the list here, 
saved map file name. So that what that means is that this install package has actually saved a copy of your map to the laptop using the ESP software and the ESP file extension. So that's the last saved file that you'll have with your Haltech ECU with the ESP software. Down the bottom here, I'll click install NSP. So this is gonna install the Nexus software programmer, like I said. Next, agree to everything. Don't read anything, just agree. Install. And finish. This installer has now installed the Nexus software. It just closed the Elite Series software. It's opened the Nexus software and it's gone online and right here is where the magic is happening. Every time I watch it doing this, it just makes me, I'm so excited about it because the extra features, the extra functionality, the extra speed that we're getting out of this Elite platform is absolutely breathtaking. And I know I probably sound like a bit of a EFI nerd, but the amount of engine management systems I go online with every single day, the amount of tuning that I do and how much time this Nexus software package is saving, uh, it, it's, the, the, it's the best thing that's happened in a long time. It's gonna go through and upgrade the Elite Series map into a Nexus map. Then it's gonna write all of the settings into the unit, then, we've got an Elite Series ECU running on the Nexus platform. Successfully upgraded the firmware of the Elite ECU to work with this software. Always good when that title has success written in it. And that's it. The Elite Series ECU is now online with the NSP software package. One of the things that we need to do is go up to the top, vehicle information. Vehicle name, Scott test car. Enter. That now creates a folder in the software on your hard drive for this particular system. That's where all of our data logs, that's where all of our auto saved files are gonna go to. All we need to do now, we'll turn the ignition off. I'll do that just here. We'll plug our ignition system back in. So plug our coils back in. We'll turn the ignition back on. Hit the key, the thing should start and run exactly the same as how it ran on the Elite Series ECU. Now before we get on with a couple of the features and functions of the system, the first thing that I wanna show, I'm gonna cut straight to the beginning bit. I'm gonna close the NSP software here and I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna go one, two, three, enter. Autocoms starts to go online, there we go. And we are tuning our Elite 2500 series. That's how long it took for the software to open and to go online. And I know that I keep going on and on about how excited I am about this, but if you've tuned an Elite Series ECU, if this is the profession, if this is your hobby, seeing something like that go online in sort of five or six seconds um, oh, makes my day. The engine management system, so if it's got the Nexus platform, it's got a green power light. If it's on the Elite platform, it's got a blue or a light blue or an aqua colored power light. So that's one of the ways to tell. Alternatively, you can just open either the Nexus software or the Elite software, try and go online. It's gonna tell you what version of firmware is inside the ECU. So nice and simple, you can't mess it up. Nothing can get deleted, makes it nice and easy. Um, if for whatever reason you have done the update into the Nexus software, we also allow you to go back to the ESP software with a simple firmware update not sure of the reason why you would wanna go back to the earlier software, but we certainly didn't wanna paint you into the corner. So if I close this software out, I'm gonna open the Elite Series software and I'm gonna try and go online. I'll show you what happens here. So I attempt to go online. Here we go, it's come up saying NSP compatible device. The detected device has been upgraded to use Haltech's NSP software instead of this ESP software. What would you like to do? I can either do nothing, I can run NSP, so it'll kick us out of the early software, it'll put us into the NSP software and it'll go online, or revert to ESP compatible firmware. So this is gonna downgrade it back to the last ESP software version and firmware version. I'll click on that now, just to show you how that's gonna happen. So as I click on that, it's gonna ask us what version of firmware we're gonna put in, We'll put in the last current Elite series for this Elite 2500 ECU. Asks me, do I want to upgrade the firmware? Yes. 
We definitely should have our ignition coils unplugged because we're doing another firmware update to bring it back down to the Elite platform. And we're back to normal again. So yes, you can go back and forward if you like, but I don't really see any reason to. Now I'd like to take you through some of the new features and functions that you'll get on your Elite Series ECU after you've updated to the Nexus Series software programmer and that firmware package. Uh, remembering that we're not gonna go through all of the NSP functionality today. There's a heap of other videos about that stuff. Specifically what I'm talking about is on your Elite Platform ECU, what extra features and functions you're gonna get. Uh, moving forward, we'll do a whole bunch more NSP videos about how to use this software package. But for the first one, the most exciting thing for me, let's just click on this button. That's the go offline button. So now we're no longer online with our Elite Series ECU. I'll click on that again. Which unit do I wanna to connect to? That one. Do I wanna make any change or save any of the changes that are made in the map in the background? No. Here we go. Oh, and she's online and we're ready to tune. Couldn't be any happier, it's such awesome progress. The first thing you're gonna notice when we open the NSP software is the new style, like so the dark mode or the black style software. You can definitely change this. If you're not a fan of that, no problem at all. We can just change the theme to maybe the, the classic theme that you might be more familiar with. Or we could choose the midnight style mode, so the real dark mode. Or the one that I like, modern mode. It's probably a little bit easier on the eye, a little bit easier to see all the values now. Um, while I'm on that, a little bit easier to see all of those. I know I said I wouldn't go into the NSP software, but there's so many nice little things that I really enjoy. So while we're talking about being able to see all the values in here, if I go down here to table text view, one of the new values here are being able to change the font size of all of the values. So we can change the font size of the tables. If I go down the side here and I go to the navigation tree options and I'll change all the units down the side here to be bigger or smaller, I used to wear glasses and when I used to wear glasses and bounce around in the car a little bit, it was a real struggle to see some of those smaller numbers. So having the option to do that in the software makes a really big difference. One of the next big changes is the addition of the scope mode. So if I click here on the oscilloscope button, that's gonna come up and that's gonna be triggering right now. So that's straight out of the base configuration and that's scoping. I'm gonna simulate here on our engine simulator here. That's giving us our trigger signal, so the trigger voltage into the engine management system. Then the trigger input state, what the engine management is actually doing with that data. As well as down the bottom, the home or the synchronization event or the cam pulse. So in this case, we've got eight trigger events coming in, then a single cam tooth or a reset event coming in, again and again and again. So there is our four channel oscilloscope. I'll close that off. And along the top here again, we've got more new functionality, the password protection area. Previously, we had a password on the entire map. So if you did apply a password to your map, that was on the particular map, not the engine management system. So that means that you could still go online with the unit. You could still load a map over the top, which would erase all passwords, all settings, uh, all configuration. Now, we can apply a password, but instead of applying it to the entire map, we might want to password protect just the engine configuration, just the fuel map, just the ignition map. You might want to leave the rest of it open. So you might want to leave all the data logging open. You might want to leave the overall fuel trim or uh, the target boost pressure or a bunch of different things open depending on how you're tuning the car and who you're tuning that car for. A really good use case for this is if you're tuning a circuit car, you might want to lock the main fuel and ignition maps from the end user, but you want to allow them to adjust their traction control strategy at the circuit freely. So you can do that by password protecting only separate parts of the table, things that you want to protect uh, or things that you don't want anyone tinkering with. Next, we've got the engine management systems onboard data logging. So we'll come out of there, we'll come down to the data logger, Okay, the Elite 2500 series ECU has got eight megabytes of onboard data logging. We can sample up to 60 channels at a time and we can sample at rates of up to 200 Hertz or getting a sample every five milliseconds. So that's pretty quick. 
Within the ESP software package, once that eight megabytes was full, it was full. And you would have to go in, you would have to download it, erase it, then send the customer back out or you know get back out on the racetrack and do another log. Within the NSP software package, we're doing things a little bit differently. And we've got what we call loop logging. So that means that we can set the logger up so that you can either be logging either all the time or when this channel here goes over say 50%. So at the moment, I've got this configured so that when throttle position is greater than 50%. You might wanna do when manifold pressure is on boost or maybe even just whenever the engine runs. So if the engine RPM is greater than 500, for example, the data logger will start, it'll log your selected up to 60 channels. Once it fills that eight megabytes of memory, it'll just start overriding the oldest memory. So that means that you've always got the last eight megabytes of engine running times. So you always have a really good snapshot of that last eight megabytes of data from the engine running. So you always know exactly what just happened. Now coming back to the beginning and the communication speed, you might be asking yourself, well, how long is it gonna to take to download eight megabytes of data out of the engine management system and get it into the playback mode or into the data log viewer. So I've just made a quick data log here. I've logged 60 channels at 200 Hertz. I've filled up the eight megabytes of onboard logging and it's now loop logging. I'm gonna turn our condition down, which means that all of a sudden it's gonna stop data logging. We need to get that data log out of the engine management system. I'm gonna come up here, NSP software to our data log manager button. I'll click on that. It's now gonna tell me, okay, so our eight megabytes of data, 60 channels at five millisecond intervals or 200 Hertz, logged for a total of two minutes and 48 seconds, then started doing some loop logging. If I click here and go, ready? One, two, three, extract. There we go. That's telling me that it's extracting that now. So it's eight megabytes. It's already up to say 15%, something like that, 20%. Just like going online with the engine management system, this update makes all of the, the data transfer stuff so much faster. Even the live traces in all of the, the 2D and 3D fuel tables, everything is just so much faster and so much more reactive. So. We're up to now 70% downloaded on an eight megabyte file. In our ESP software, that certainly would have been a few coronas by the time that, that got downloaded. Nearly there, we're up to, done. Eight megabytes downloaded from the onboard memory into the data log viewer software and she's away. The NSP software does look a little bit different to the ESP software, but we've tried to keep all of the keystrokes the same. It feels really familiar. I understand that so many people have invested so much time in the ESP platform and you know exactly where everything is. Don't worry, we're gonna be doing heaps more videos and sort of feature specific videos using the NSP software as we move forward. There's already a heap on our YouTube channel, so go check those out. Most importantly, if we come up here, help, keyboard reference. We go through here, okay. Page up is still page up for power. Don't worry about that. We've still got the spacebar key. We've still got all of the familiar keys. So that's all fine there. So wrapping all this up, if you've got a single connector series, elite series ECU, a VMS, an elite 550, an elite 750, an elite 950. If you've got an elite 2500, an elite 2000, elite 1500, elite 1000, the NSP update is available for you and it's available now. It's all really straightforward. Do the firmware update. Remember to unplug your ignition coils. Go online with your NSP. Be happy with your comm speed and just start enjoying your engine management system. Oh, and I nearly forgot the best thing. It's free. This isn't even a sales pitch. It doesn't matter when you bought your Elite Platform ECU. This update works for you and it's free. It's Haltech's 35th anniversary this year, and this is just one of those days that we wanna give back to you, the guys that have been using our systems for so long. We wanna say thank you. We wanna give you something that we know that you'll enjoy. Hell, I know I've been absolutely loving using this software platform, and I really hope you do too.